Today I'm going to talk about autophagy, how fasting not only helps you lose weight, but also activates autophagy. We're going to talk about what it is and how it can make you healthier. And it's coming right up. What is autophagy? The 2016 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded to Dr. Yoshinari Osumi for his discoveries on autophagy. The word derives from the Greek auto, meaning self, and phagine, meaning to eat. The word literally means eating yourself. It's the body's mechanism of getting rid of all the broken down old cellular machinery, such as the organelles, the proteins, and the cell membrane, when there's no longer needed or they're not functioning well. It's a regulated orderly process to not just degrade these parts, but to recycle them. Proteins are broken down during the process of autophagy and then taken to the liver where they're burned either for energy or they're broken down into amino acids. Amino acids are the cellular parts that make up proteins. It's sort of like when you take a Lego and break it into the bricks. You can then take those bricks and build something new. And that's what the body does with these proteins. The proteins that are no longer so functional or they're very old get broken down into amino acids. The amino acids can then be reassembled into new proteins rather than keeping the old junky ones. Autophagy is a survival mechanism under conditions of stress and it maintains the cellular integrity by regenerating these metabolic precursors and clearing out all the debris. It sounds really bad to be breaking down proteins because we always think that building is good and breaking down is bad, but that's not the right way to think about it. Think about the process of renovating your bathroom. Say you have a really old tub and sink and they're from the 70s and they're avocado green. Well, if you want to renovate it, the first thing you need to do is get rid of them all. You got to throw it all out. Then you can put in your new sink and your new tub and so on because you've made room for it. And that's the same thing that happens in the body. We don't continually grow once we're adults. We maintain the same size, but in order to function well, we have to get rid of the old proteins and replace them with new proteins. So that's what autophagy really does. It's the process of cellular regeneration and autophagy is that first critical step in breaking down these old proteins. How does autophagy work? Once it's initiated, the proteins and the old cellular debris that the body just doesn't want anymore gets targeted for removal. Then it gets enveloped into a compartment called the autolysosome. And this prevents all the destructive processes from spreading all over the cell. And it gets contained within this compartment. This compartment then merges with something called a lysosome, which is filled with all these destructive enzymes called hydrolases. When they merge, all the hydrolases go down and they break down the proteins into their component amino acids, just like taking apart that Lego structure. Then from there, you can recycle those amino acids into new. This review article from the New England Journal of Medicine reviews all the ways that autophagy is important in human health condition. In fact, it's increasingly recognized that autophagy plays a key role in both aging and disease. There are several ways that autophagy does this. There are different types of autophagy. There's lipophagy, which is the regulation of lipid metabolism. It also suppresses inflammation. There's agrophagy, which is clearing out these old misshapen protein clumps that can really clog up the machinery of the cell. There's xenophagy, which is destroying these proteins that are related to infections, such as degrading bacteria and viruses. And finally, there's mitophagy, which is the process of regenerating mitochondria, which are those powerhouses that generate energy for the cell. And when autophagy is 
dysregulated in some way, it plays a role in all of these different diseases, such as metabolic diseases like type 2 diabetes and obesity, pulmonary diseases like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, neurodegenerative and aging diseases such as Alzheimer's and Huntington's chorea. Alzheimer's, for example, we know that there are lots of protein aggregates in the brain and perhaps if we could clear them out, it's possible that we could even prevent these uh, onset of Alzheimer's disease. Autophagy also plays a role in infectious diseases because of its role in breaking down viruses, bacteria. Vascular diseases, this is heart attacks and strokes. It plays a critical role in keeping our body healthy, keeping those blood vessels nice and supple, and clearing out all those aggregates of proteins and cholesterols that clog up our arteries and cause heart attacks. And cancer. Cancer is also a disease of too much growth, so clearing out these old things and replacing them with new things might be a way that we can prevent certain types of cancer. Now that we know how important autophagy is, the question is, how are we going to activate it? We know that autophagy is very highly regulated. Too much is not good, but too little is also not good because you're not going to activate that rejuvenation process. The key is nutrient deprivation. Our body has certain hormonal messengers that are nutrient sensors, predominantly insulin and something called mTOR. These tell us that, hey, food is available. So if we eat, for example, carbohydrates, insulin will go up. If we eat proteins like amino acids, then mTOR goes up. And it gives a signal to the rest of the body that food is now available and we should grow. On the flip side, when we don't eat, such as when we're fasting, both mTOR and insulin are going to go down. And it sends a signal that, hey, no food is available. Let's hunker down, slow down the cell growth, and go into this regeneration maintenance mode. For autophagy, mTOR is the key regulator. It integrates the information from nutrient availability, hypoxia, that's oxygen, growth factors, and insulin. And when mTOR is high, it gives a signal to go ahead and grow. When it's low, it says slow down growth, and that's when you activate autophagy. The most efficient way, therefore, to activate autophagy is to restrict those foods. You can go into a very low protein diet, but then you run the risk of not having enough protein to build what you need for muscle and other uh, body parts. So fasting is actually the best way to activate autophagy. First, you're not getting any protein or any other nutrient signals. So therefore, you're maximally lowering mTOR and stimulating autophagy. But fasting does more than that because as you break down those subcellular parts, as you activate the autophagy, fasting also stimulates growth hormone so that when you do eat again, your body is now primed to replace all those proteins that you need. It's ready to rebuild. So that process of breaking down the old, getting rid of the stuff that's junky, and replacing it with new is actually called rejuvenation. And that's what fasting does. Interestingly enough, fasting has always been considered to be a rejuvenative process. People have been fasting for thousands of years, and in the past they'd call it a cleanse or a detoxification. And that's exactly what autophagy is. Fasting allows your body to clean out those old proteins that it doesn't need. It's just now that science is catching up. And now we understand how fasting can be part of good health by clearing out all of those excessive proteins through the process of autophagy. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned something and if you did, maybe share it with a friend.
they might be interested in it too. And if you could do me a favor and hit that like button uh, right down below so that other people can help. And also check out the merchandise on the shelf if you wanted to get some fasting method hoodies or sweats or glass. Thanks so much.